So here we have your LCI uh, leveling controls and all that. Just got an on off button. Then to raise, it's already in the raise position. So you get front, raise the front up. But here has a retract button, which there's a red indicator light. Uh, when that's on and you hit front, it'll take it down. Uh, and there's also these uh, modes you can go in, hit up, you go to manual mode. If like it's throwing an error code or something like that, you can still get the jacks up or down. Uh, and then when you get it off the truck and everything, there's this auto level button, you just hit it. It'll auto level the whole camper, set it up where it needs to go, uh, get it to auto adjust height and all that. You don't have to do anything, just let it go. Uh, it's solar prepped, uh, so if you buy a second hand uh, solar panel, you can plug it in here and it'll automatically tend your batteries, keep them charged up and stuff while you're dry camping and everything like that. Uh, in here, just your uh, hydraulic pump as well as your reservoir and the solenoid for the hydraulic. Uh, it's got all your lines that go to each one of your uh, your landing gear and all that good stuff and it just distributes fluid where it needs to go to level it out and do all that good stuff. And if you ever need to look at this, this is a instruction manual for anything and everything to do with the leveling system. Alright, so in here we've got your power cord which we already have one plugged in here on hand so that's where it plugs in at. Uh, I'll take it off to show you. Just you have to pull it out. Uh, when you do it, you just push in, line it up right, push it in, and screw that lock on. That's it for that. Uh, you know, come in on this. Uh, we've got three water valves here. The top one is for winterizing. So if you get like a section of hose, stick it in here, and you have the winterized valve here. So when it's in the winterized on position. It will suck from here out of your antifreeze jug instead of sucking from the fresh water tank. Uh, but if you turn it to the off position, it's just gonna suck water from the fresh water tank to put water in the lines and what have you. Uh, then we've got the fresh water city water connection. So you hook your water up here and there's a valve here that goes to either normal flow, down is fill. So if you're wanting to fill your fresh tank, uh, you plug it up here, put it on fill, uh, give it time and watch your indicator and it'll tell you when it's full uh, and but if you fill your tank when you're done doing that you have to turn it back to normal flow or it's going to let water push out of here with the water pump but if you're just going to be using it in a campground or somewhere you have access to constant water you could hook it up here leave it on normal flow and just use the back pressure off the hose to pressurize your lines so that you don't have to use your tank you don't have to use your pump none of that you just use the back pressure off the hose for all your water needs uh, we have this third one here. It's not really labeled, but it says caution and all that good stuff. It's a, a black tank flush. So you hook the water hose up here, and when you turn it on, it'll send water through the system and go down to the black tank, and it will jet water down in there to break up any solid waste or anything like that, just toilet paper, stuff like that. So when you dump your tanks, it's good to do that every period, you know, three months or so periodically, uh, just to get any solid waste that you don't want in there out. Uh, and if like your indicator or something is saying a third full, but you just emptied it, that'd be a good thing to use to flush the black tank out just to make sure everything's done. And if you want to look right here, we've got satellite and cable prep for like if you're at a park or have a tailgater package or something like that. You could actually plug the coax in one of these and it will uh, disperse the satellite to all your coaxes in the coach. Instead of having to like run through the window or through the door or something like that, it will just automatically disperse it where it needs to go. Then we have a battery disconnect switch. So uh, if you're gonna be storing it and you're not gonna be using it, when you turn that off, it just eliminates any power from draining off the battery so it saves your battery and it's not gonna be low when you come back to it and all that. Uh, and here we have your water heater. Inside your water heater, it's got a propane valve, it's got an electric element, uh, it's got an anode. So when you go to use it, you're gonna wanna put the anode in and then over here, it actually has the water heater bypass. The bypass is on right now, so uh, that means no water can actually enter it. But when you go to summarize it, get all the antifreeze out of your lines, when you're done, you want to put that anode in and then turn that to off. And, I mean, uh, yeah, turn that to off. Once it's on off, uh, it'll put water into the tank and fill up and what have you. Uh, it's auto ignites. There's no light in any pilots or anything like that. There's a switch inside, and I'll show you that more when we get inside. Uh, 
It is a 12 gallon tank. It's the biggest one they make for uh, campers. Uh, it might take a while to heat up, but it has a lot more hot water than most campers do. You close that up and it's got this pull tab. You pull it, you twist, to lock it in, and it stays. Uh, here we have the furnace vent. It does get very hot, so if you're going to have children or if you're going to be out here working on it or something like that, just be cautious about it because it does get very hot. It's actually warm right now. Uh, then here you have a secondary fresh tank fill. So if like you're in a hurry and you don't want to hook it up to that, and you just want to put water in the tank right before you leave the house, you just take this cap off, stick the hose in there, and that has a tunnel that goes straight down into the fresh tank. So when you turn it on, it's just going to gravity feed until the tank's full. And there actually is a vent right here, so if you overfill, it won't, uh, it won't expand the tank and bust it or anything. It actually has a fill that will shoot water out to allow any, any excess water to escape until you can get the water turned off and everything like that. Uh, come this way. this here is uh, your fuel station so you've got two different tanks one tank is for your generator one tank is for your fuel dispensing station all right so down here you open this it's actually got a gas nozzle uh, we can actually pull this out it's actually got a gas nozzle but all your uh, electronic part of it is right here it's got an on-off switch. When you turn this on, then you could actually use this to get your gas to come out uh, and then turn it off when you're done. There is a safety breakaway cable in here so that if you're dispensing fuel and something's going wrong, you could actually pull that and shut everything down physically and electronically. Uh, and there is a button right here. It says exterior gauge. And when you press that, it'll just tell you how full the fuel tank is and stuff like that. Uh, toy lock here. Uh, if you want to come down here, Tristan, there is a, a cable here that you can pull out and flip it over and put it in there and then it has a padlock there so you could pull your four wheeler up here, your motorcycle or what have you, put this around it, put the lock on it, and nobody can take it while you're asleep or something like that. Just extra security to have when you're out and about. Uh, down here is your storage. You press this button in, lets that come down when you pull this. It's got storage that locks so you can easily put stuff in there, you know, like gas cans, stuff like that that you don't want inside the coach, stinking everything up. Alright, uh, what else do we want? Uh, exterior speakers, uh, and all that's controlled by the radio inside. They are marine speakers, so they're waterproof, they're very loud. Uh, these right here are fridge vents. Uh, just to eliminate condensation and stuff from getting behind there and damaging any any wood or anything that you know you don't want to get wet it has these vents just keep condensation out uh, come this way got exterior 110 plugs they are GFI protected so that if they get wet or something out here on the inside there is a GFI that it will trip at and you will have to reset it in there so if you don't have power it's inside there and has a reset uh, down here, you've got all kinds of storage, uh, drain pipes, stuff like that. Uh, then we got two 12 volt deep cycle marine batteries that are hooked up uh, in series so that it's still a 12 volt system, it's just doubled uh, the capacity. Uh, and it is vented uh, because they do put off gases and heat and stuff, so it is vented just for safety. Uh, up here is your generator, and it does have this cover you can pull off, and then you can have your prime button, start button all that good stuff but that's all secondary there is uh, primary uh, buttons and stuff inside that I will show you later uh, but this is the location of it and it's pretty easy to get to pretty easy to look at on that all right then over here we have your propane tanks there's two of them and there's a regulator here uh, so when they're on if one runs out you have to come out here and manually swap it over with that switch uh, so it's not auto auto switch so you will have to come out here and do all that yourself but 
Uh, they're, they're big tanks, so you shouldn't have to do that that often. Uh, and it does have an indicator right here that'll tell you how much is left in them and what have you. Uh, and then you've got a switch here for just your docking lights, which are, if you're at a camp or something, you want to turn these on if you want to come out here and see them. There are these blue lights right here. So that if you're at a park or something and people are driving through, they see those lights and uh, so they don't go and hit the front of your camper, stuff like that. Uh, I guess that's it for out here with you inside. So right here is going to be your main thing to worry about in the in the whole camper. Uh, so this right here is your uh, Jensen. Uh, in command system it's a keystone exclusive thing uh, you can control anything and everything in the camper from this one touch screen thing it's got down here it says water pump water heater interior lights exterior lights, security lights you could actually turn the water pump on like that just by touching it uh, then your water heater like I said it's auto ignite so it's got this button it's gonna pop up do you want electric propane or both uh, so you could choose one of them if you choose propane it'll automatically light itself get to heating up and everything if you choose electric it just has an electric element so it'll just automatically kick on and start to heat the pot uh, and it's got all these light buttons so you could actually hit the button and it'll turn the interior lights on the kitchen lights garage lights what have you uh, and if you scroll down it's actually got your front awning you can put it out pull it in got two buttons for that uh, rear awning, it's got your slides, you got wardrobe slide, in and out, sofa slide, kitchen slide. You could actually raise or lower the hitch from in here. Uh, then like I said right here, it's got the generator buttons. It shows you how much fuel's in the generator, how much fuel's in the fuel station. You can either prime the generator, you know, get the fuel going to it. If it's been sitting for a while, then you could hit start, actually start it up. Uh, up here it has all the indicators for fresh tank one. Uh, black tank one, black tank two, gray tank one, and gray tank two. Uh, then down here, these manual buttons, they are uh, tank heaters for the fresh tank, the gray tank, and the black tank. Now what that does is just a 12 volt switch to, uh, there's a stick on pad heater on the bottom of those tanks, and they are labeled so you know which ones you're turning on and what have you. It's just secondary defense to keep from your tanks freezing up in, in the winter time if you're going to be using it in the winter time. Uh, these buttons here, uh, so when you're running the radio, you've got, it's automatically going to play through the inside speakers, but then you have this uh, button that'll turn the garage speakers on or off, and the outside speakers on or off. Uh, it's got a button for your step lights, uh, and then right here is for uh, the automatic vent fan. If you want to look right there, Tristan, uh, you raise it up. See it right there? Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. You can open it up. Turn the fan on or off, and then you can close it back. All by the touch of this button. Uh, then uh, we've got your refrigerator. It's one of the biggest refrigerators I mean, Norcold makes uh, that they put in these campers nowadays. So it's got a power button. Uh, when it comes on, you got these three little indicators. Uh, one is for gas. One is for gas or propane, which is automatic. And then you have just electric. So when you hit the mode button, you can either go to auto. Now what auto does, if you're plugged into uh, shore power, it's automatically gonna use electricity to save gas. And But if for some reason that the uh, electricity went out, it would automatically swap to propane as long as your propane is on to keep uh, all your food and everything inside uh, still good and everything. Uh, but you could also put it on only electric or only gas. And the third button over here is just temperature set. One being warmer, nine being colder, and you can t uh, set it to your personal preference. Uh, there's plenty of space and storage in there. Like I said, it's the biggest ones that they put in these campers nowadays. And over here, this is a microwave. Not only a microwave, it's a convection oven. So you could actually cook a turkey in there if you wanted to. Uh, it's got the uh, vent light and the vent fan all inside of the convection oven uh, so you will need 110 to run all that it won't work the fan and the light won't work off a of 12 volt it will actually have to be plugged in for that to work uh, other than that it's just like a basic microwave uh, here you've got your stove which has a pop-up grease cover uh, so 
so what you do is you just turn it to light and this one it actually comes with a striker that will actually turn on like that it will actually spark which is good because even in some of the bigger newer campers they don't have a striker you still have to light them with lighters and matches and what have you but that's a good thing to have now uh, the oven it has a pilot down in the bottom uh, but the striker does not work on there so you will still have to use a match or a lighter to light the pilot but once the pilot's lit you can keep it lit and just turn it up and turn it down whenever you need to use it and when you're not using it uh, and here we got these light switches for indirect lights then overhead lights uh, that's what those two switches there are for uh, oversized sink is real deep you can do all your dishes in there and everything uh, and the head actually pulls out uh, it's actually got two modes there's a button for either just a stream or you have another one for uh, spray uh, and it's got two sets of keys that come with it uh, two sets of door keys two sets of compartment keys two sets of padlock keys for the toy lock all that good stuff and then you down here in here you have remotes for anything and everything as far as the TV wise and your radio and your DVD player and all that good stuff uh, your sound bar all that uh, so uh, and this blue bag here uh, it'll probably be in the sink when you get it uh, there's a manual to anything and everything in here uh, from your toilet to your refrigerator to uh, to anything and everything like the vent to uh, TV anything and everything so if you need some reading material and you just want to educate yourself you can always go in there and refer back to anything uh, the chairs the couches they are all recliner uh, they just have a pull tab on the side that will release it and lift up you can recline uh, but there are some buttons here there's a light that will uh, illuminate your cup holder uh, and then heat for heated seats uh, and there actually is a lock button so that you can lock it while you're in it so you don't change any of the settings that you have sitting there uh, we get up uh, it's got your TV your sound bar it actually comes with a blu-ray player uh, all that's pretty self-explanatory you should be able to know how to use that but down here we've got the radio uh, and it's just like a basic car stereo, so it's got all the good functions and everything. It's got uh, you just turn it on and uh, go to let me see here, go to tuner and you can turn it up and uh, just do whatever, what have you. Like I said, on the wall over there, there's outdoor speakers, garage speakers, all that good stuff uh, down here. You've got your 12 volt fuses, your 110 breakers, and they're all labeled with these stickers right here, one being one, two being two, three being three, and so on and so forth, as far as that, one being one, two being two, three being three. Uh, cool thing about these 12 volt break, I mean, uh, fuses, uh, if, if for some reason something's not working and you think it's a 12 volt problem, you can come over here and look. Uh, if one of these fuses are blown out, uh, there's little red LED indicator lights that will tell you which one's blown so that eliminates the problem of having to pull them out look in the light and being oh no that's not it and checking the next one so it does have an indicator to tell you which one is uh, blowed out so you know which one to change uh, right here is propane and carbon monoxide detector propane's more dense than oxygen is so it sinks to the ground that's why this is so low to the ground now this does have an internal battery so like if your house battery, the RV battery, gets so low that it can't power your fridge or your furnace or something like that, but it still has just enough to keep pushing propane or something like that, this actually has an internal battery that'll stay alive for at least eight hours after your battery completely dies so that if there's any problem, it'll wake you up out of your sleep or just tell you when, it's, when something's going on. So just a secondary line of defense just to keep you safe. Uh, if we wanna come back here, We've got the garage, which has washer dryer hookups. Uh, it's got light switches for everything back here. Uh, it also has a secondary bathroom, half bath. It's got a toilet, sink, all that good stuff. And they do have their own tanks. So it's got a secondary black tank, secondary gray tank, just for this stuff. Uh, and if you come up here, we got uh, the TV, uh, backup can, I mean, can to wash four wheelers and all that good stuff. Uh, if you look here, we have a button for the awning to extend it, retract it, uh, 
Then this button here is for the bed lift. So if you want to see that, it goes, uh, hit the button and it'll bring these down. And then hit the button the other way and it'll bring them up. And you just max them out and do what have you. Uh, it's also got a uh, compartment up here. I'm not sure what's in there. <laughs> Let me grab my key. Alright, so that's just storage for, you know, what have you, and uh, for the ladder to get on the beds and stuff like that. Uh, but it does have extra storage. You can put small knickknacks and stuff like that in there. Uh, just be careful for when you got it open, nobody walks through the door. And, hits it with the door on their way into the garage. Uh, over here there is a button for the rear view camera so you can actually turn it on it illuminates when it's on all that good stuff. Then uh, you got your steps for the back patio you lay it down you can hook them steps up so you can get up and down from there. It's got patio chairs, it's got a table and all that good stuff. It's actually got a rug so if you're not going to use it for a garage you're just going to use it for you know, just being back here and partying and stuff, you could actually roll that rug out. It's more comfortable than just this hard membrane floor. Uh, we're gonna come back in here. We've got your thermostat here. Now this is a RV comfort zone. Uh, it's got multiple zones in it because this has three zones. Uh, so. It's got mode, zone, and system, then your up and down buttons. So uh, right now it's in heat right now. So if you want to change it to, uh, if you want to change, you can ch change heat to on and off with the mode button. Uh, but if you want to change the system, like change it to air conditioner, it changes to cool, hit mode and it'll put cool and do your desired temperature. And then it will kick on and do whatever you need it to do. And change zones, you hit the zone and right there it'll show you what zone you're on and you can change the system to uh, heat or uh, your just the fan or just the air conditioner and you can change it and uh, adjust the setting to where you want it at uh, and it'll either heat the camper or lower the camper to wherever you want it at keep it comfortable in here uh, but that's it for that uh, come up in here to the master bath now Here's one of the main things right here. What This is a GFI, which it has a test and a reset on it. Uh, if any of the plugs, the regular plugs that aren't GFIs in the camper, have these little white stickers on them, uh, it says GFI protected outlet. Uh, they are protected by GFI, but they will all trip back at this one. So if you're having problems with plugs like, or what have you, uh, not working, come check this. There is a... Uh, there is a red indicator light that will tell you that it's tripped or what have you. Uh, and if that is tripped, you just have to reset it and then go and check your plugs again. Uh, it's got a full-size shower, uh, skylight, all that good stuff, toilet. Uh, we can come into here. All right, so in here we've got the bedroom. Uh, if you walk in here, it's got uh, the bed, which is upgraded mattress. It's more of a Tempur-Pedic type mattress instead of a regular hard spring RV mattress. Uh, there is storage compartments up underneath it with drawers and all that. Uh, if you come over here, uh, this is the main light switch for it. So uh, the one right by the door when you walk in. But if you look over the bed, there's these two uh, reading lights. So they actually are on their own circuit and have just a switch on them. So you can turn one on, turn one off. Uh, just for whatever, what have you, whenever you're sitting in the bed at night and need a little bit of light or something. There is ports on, uh, outlets on each side of the bed for cell phone chargers, CPAP machines, whatever, what have you. Uh, there is a uh, smoke detector in here. Uh, so if, if there's any type of smoke or carbon monoxide or anything like that, that seeps into the bedroom and actually alarm you, wake you up, do what have you to get you out of here safely. Uh, there is exit windows. So there's just like a little lift up and then you push this all the way out and the window's not going to fall out. It's just made to be a latch to where you can get out of it easy. There's red tabs. So you can pull the screen off quickly and push that out and get out safely. Uh, and then you just, to lock it back in, you just pull it in and then lock it back in that same position it was in. Uh, and if we come through here, 
just entered back into this hallway. Uh, there's actually another smoke detector right there. To, uh, if there's any smoke coming from the kitchen, what have you. Uh, and uh, down here, we've got uh, the central vacuum, which is a internal vacuum that has, uh, you can plug your hose up to here and you turn it on. Uh, and there's a hose that comes with it with, that stretches the whole length of the camper so there's not any nook or cranny that you can't reach with this thing. Uh, there's fire extinguisher for extra safety and the best part, you've got a bottle opener right there. And that seems to be about it. I think that's all that I can think of. So if you have any questions, just call us and we'll make sure you get it right.